standards from our education system. I'm the former Frank Key. Of the Northwest Pass, we really need somebody different. Your career, you're used to winning a lot. It was everything to us. Seven or eight weeks of two days. They really made me appreciate we're allowed to win. It means coming in and we'll be shooting the whole time. Let's go back real quick to the, the Enid Walker thing. And of course, we have training in confined space. Legitimately, you know, I could say tip on that, Steve. Put my hat on and get out there and yeah. do the job. The television model that you watched growing up. Houston, this is the International Space Station. City Connections begins right now. Hello again and welcome to City Connections. I'm Steve Kime. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm very excited about our guest today. Well, I'm really excited each week about our guest, but this one's extra special. And forgive me for saying that because last week I think I said they were special. Well, this is really extra special because I've interviewed NFL players, governors, congressmen, and the list goes on. But I don't recall interviewing an astronaut. How cool is that? Let me read something to you. Your achievements can be as great as your dreams. Reach for the stars. That's by Dr. Nancy Curry Gregg, astronaut, who happens to be sitting to my right. Nancy, Hi. thanks for letting me call you Nancy. Okay. That's a long title. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to Enid, Oklahoma. I know you've been here before. Welcome to the Enid Television Network studio. So I know you've had a, a full day and you're on this Endeavor, if you will, and it wasn't that one of the space shows you were yes, on. Was. Endeavor. Absolutely. Excuse me for saying that. <laughs> Had to throw that word in there. Absolutely. Uh, again, welcome to Enid. Uh, when you look at um, Dr. Gregg's uh, bio, you'll find out she's an Army Colonel. She's flown helicopters. She's an educator. She's a research uh, at NASA. Uh, wife, mom, and the list goes on. And you have a doctorate in engineering of some type. Okay. And uh, with all respect, uh, anyone with a PhD gets all the respect that I can send your way. I just didn't know that it was engineering something. <laughs> but how in the world do you get all these achievements done? Are you this check it off type person or what? That's an impressive bio. No, I just always uh, tried to pursue my, my dreams. Okay. And uh, you know, I grew up in a small town very similar to Enid, uh, Troy, Ohio. Um, very similar in terms of the population and the environment and and just was really fortunate to have some high school teachers who pointed me in directions that I might not have ever ever thought of as a possibility for myself. Neither one of my folks even graduated from high school. So my folks didn't talk to me about sure. studying math, science, engineering right. and I got that at high school. And so uh, ever since that time, I've just always had a goal. Uh, many of those goals, you know, especially becoming an astronaut, to me was, you know, I talk to kids all the time about, well, just consider your life like a ladder. And, you know, your goals are each rung of the ladder. And you might stop halfway up. But if you're pursuing your dreams and you love what you're doing, that's mm -hmm. fine. And so becoming an aviator, becoming a military pilot, you know, that was one of my dreams. And if I'd stopped there, I would have been the happiest person in the world. But, you know, I've just been really blessed to have had other opportunities along the way. Well, I wanted to show, uh, open our, our visit today with your quote, of, you know, reaching for the stars, because that, that's so important from time, from time to time. We need an exhorter. We need an encourager. We need somebody on our side to say, reach for that dream or pursue that dream or reach for that star. So let's go back, uh, Ohio. Um, Maybe not a lot of uh, academic influence from your parents, but somehow the word astronaut or the interest of astronaut showed up somewhere. Tell us about that beginning interest. Well, the beginning interest, I mean, when I was a, a little, little girl, uh, we started to fly humans into space in this country. And quite frankly, at that time, that was not a realistic goal for a little girl growing up. You know, all of the astronauts were men yeah. uh, up until 1978 when the first women were selected to fly on shuttle. And I was in college in 1978. So I didn't grow up with that dream, but I did grow up with a dream of being a pilot and specifically being a military pilot. And no one ever told me that wasn't a possibility. And so as I look back on it now, I was really fortunate they let women start flying in the military in the mid 70s when I was in high school. And then the first female astronauts were selected when I was in college. So it seemed like those doors just kept opening in front of me and allowing that possibility. 
And so again, I, I kind of took it one step at a time and pursued my goal of becoming a, a pilot. Um, many people ask why the Army. Quite frankly, I was too short for all the other services. <laughs> uh, the Army was the first one to institute anthropometric standards. Uh, I am what uh, affectionately is referred to as vertically challenged. I'm only five <laughs> feet tall. Uh, and so uh, tall enough <laughs> tall enough and and I just yeah. love flying helicopters yeah. and uh, the Army also uh, trained me to fly uh, aircraft uh, uh, fixed wing as well and then uh, after a few years in the military I started seriously thinking about the astronaut program at that point I had already gotten a master's degree and felt like I was qualified on paper but I was very very young and uh, it's the first lesson I think uh, I learned in my life that I always pass along to everybody is y you can't ever get selected for something if you don't try. Um, so I put in my application and, and I was just shocked when I got called for an interview. Impressive. I th I, forgive me for not knowing my Oklahoma history like I should, but Oklahoma has a real interest in the, the space program, if you will, because of there's seven or eight astronauts from Oklahoma. Was there a particular astronaut that kind of served as inspiration to you when, when, as you're developing your military career and you're continuing to move forward? Was there somebody who said, you know, I'd like to follow that person? For me, being a kid from Ohio was Neil Armstrong, okay. without a doubt. Yeah. Uh, later on, once I was an astronaut, I, I had the, the distinct pleasure to meet uh, Mr. Armstrong and the most impressive man I've ever met in my entire life, the most humble intelligent uh, man I've ever met in my entire life and and he's always been my ins inspiration I, I think uh, certainly Sally Ride being the mm -hmm. first woman to fly in space um, Sally Ride's last day at NASA was my first day at NASA um, and so I did get to meet her and you know just thanked her for opening up the doors that that allowed me sure. to follow that same path I think we can all say that there's an individual before has paved the way for us to pursue other opportunities. Well, uh, this went on our list of questions, but that's a mighty impressive jacket that you're wearing. <laughs> you just don't see too many of those jackets in Enid, Oklahoma, especially here at our television network studio. Tell us a little bit about the patches, if you will. Well, of course, each, the, each of our missions has a patch that's designed by the crew. Which so, is what we have on our screen here. So, so hopefully those are. So each each one of those represents a mission I was okay. on. So this one is STS-57, which was in 1993, my first uh, space flight. We retrieved the European Carrier Assembly spacecraft, and we also performed a lot of experiments. Uh, the second one, this is actually known as the All Ohio Crew. So if you look closely, that is the block O <laughs> okay. to symbolize Ohio. And we deployed, a, uh, we deployed a satellite. <laughs> uh, My third flight, STS-88, we actually took up the first U.S. piece of the International Space Station. And then as a robotic arm operator, I grappled the first Russian segment that you see on top and mated the two together. And then wow. we did a series of three spacewalks, put together all the electrical connections and fluid connections. And then we actually went in and turned on the lights for the first time and made that call, Houston, this is the International Space Station. Wow. So that was a really, yeah. really interesting mission. And then my fourth mission, uh, 15 years ago tomorrow, uh, was STS-109. We went up and serviced the Hubble Space Telescope. Um, so I, I had the four pretty distinct uh, but all exciting missions over the course of a 15 year career. And since I'm a very much novice in this space world, STS means what? Space Transportation System. Okay. Hopefully. <laughs> now, this is an education program, so hopefully STS, you figured out. Space Transportation System. Okay, very good. Our special guest today on City Connections, Dr. Nancy curry Gregg, And uh, Nancy's talking about uh, basically her background, the military background, and then how she transition into being an astronaut and then there are four missions, is that correct? Four, four missions, missions on space shuttle. And she's also up in Enid uh, on a special mission as well and we'll talk to, to uh, Nancy about that a little bit more. Now, being from Ohio and a, a graduate, you're a Buckeye and a great football team and, and everything else, basketball at Ohio State, but you have an Enid connection. And there's two specifically that I'm getting at. Can you kind of fill in the blanks of of those Sure. Well, the first one is I'm blessed to be married to a, a Enid High School graduate, um, Tim Gregg, 
And so one of our trips before we even married is to come back to his hometown okay. and for him to show me all around Enid. Um, I call it kind of the, the Troy, Ohio West. Um, okay. It's very similar to my hometown that he also had an opportunity to visit. Uh, and so on our visit, he took me past the high school where he went to school and, and pointed out the observatory, which I thought was fascinating. As an astronaut, we do a lot of educational outreach, so we're in schools um, throughout the United States and, and beyond even. And uh, quite frankly, I'd never seen a school with an observatory before, so that was pretty fascinating, and he took astronomy when he, when he was here in high school. Uh, the other connection is I did some training at Vance Air Force Base. Uh, w once I was selected as an astronaut. So I had very fond memories uh, during my astronaut candidate year uh, of coming to Vance uh, with my classmates in training here. It's amazing the people that I meet across the state of Oklahoma and really all across the country. When you say Enid, Oklahoma, boom, there's that, that connection to Vance. Somehow or another, either they were here for pilot training or they were here for some type of, uh, um, some type of test, but uh, it's amazing the impact that Vance Air Force Base has on, any, on individuals. Science, technology, engineering, mathematics, STEM. Um, so you're in support of all of that, definitely with the doctorate, you're all about academics, you're about um, science and technology, if you will. Where does this support for STEM, if you will, where does that come from, Nancy? For me personally? Yeah. Again, I, th I think it comes back to, it was something I wasn't exposed to in my own home. Uh, and so it's very, very important, especially for kids that are in a geographical area that may not have a strong connection to either a university setting or a lot of research and development, uh, to show them the possibilities of having a career in something like science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, I also teach um, part-time uh, at the university level and, and uh, uh, just introducing to kids, even at that level, the hands-on nature of you know, building a robotic system and, and seeing that come to fruition, that, that transforming your engineering knowledge into hands-on capability and, and creating things. You know, some of our best achievements in this country have been arisen from scientists and mathematicians and, and engineers. Of course, obviously in the space program, we rely on that. Um, so I have a real passion for that because I, you know, as we continue on in generations, uh, our technology increases in complexity um, and we need more scientists and mathematicians, engineers to have our country progress in the same manner as we have for, for decades and even centuries. Before our taping today, you'd mentioned about um, your, your willingness or, and being available as much as possible to speak to students as much as you can. Um, knowing that you're an astronaut and you're speaking to a group of kids, maybe they're sitting on a hard <laughs> basketball court floor or even at, at a high school level or collegiate level, is there one particular question that seems to, no matter what, no matter where you're at speaking, comes forward and says, Dr. Greg, you know, I want to know about an astronaut. Is there one particular question that you could share with this? There are, there are two. Okay. Uh, the first one is, what does it feel like <laughs> in space? And I get that at all education levels. Um, and I always tell them, if you go into a swimming pool and completely relax and, and close your eyes and just float, that's the greatest okay. sense. In fact, to practice for spacewalks, we practice in, a, in an extremely large swimming pool, 200 feet long and 100 feet across. And, and uh, because that's the most analogous environment to being in a microgravity environment of space. The second question that I get, regardless of age or educational <laughs> level, is how do you go to the bathroom in space? <laughs> And, then, and there's a short answer and a long answer a, probably the, to that. The short answer is very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> the slightly longer answer is um, <laughs> airflow substitutes for gravity. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Your achievements 
can be as great as your dreams. Reach for the stars. My special guest today, Dr. Nancy Curry Gregg, our, our astronaut guest here at the Indy Television Network on City Connections. We're going to talk a little bit more, Nancy, on a on another mission that she's involved in and it hits closer to home right here in Enid, Oklahoma. And we're going to do that right after this. Thanks for staying with us on City Connections. Welcome back to City Connections. Thank you for staying with us, and I certainly hope you enjoy uh, the program today. I get feedback all the time from the individuals that have watched a variety of interviews we've done, and uh, I, I think you get the impression that we really strive to bring you uh, a guest with the Enid Connection, but also just a really impressive guest to just let us know what's going on in the world around us. And uh, Dr. Nancy Curry Gregg is our special guest today on City Connection. Came all the way up from NASA, the Houston area. I guess I can say Houston area. Is that, a, is that close enough? Yes. <laughs> we want to talk about the observatory at Enid High School. It's had its place in history. It's had its place in students' lives from the 70s and, and forward. But um, my question is, why don't you tell us about your involvement in the observatory? What's going on? Well, the first time I saw the observatory was on my first trip uh, to Enid, uh, married, getting married to Tim, who was right. a resident of, uh, of Enid. And, and he pointed out the observatory, and again, I was just taken aback that, wow, a high school with an observatory. I, what a unique thing mm -hmm, to have. Sure. Um, and then as we did a little more research, um, we found out that over the years it had kind of fallen into to some disrepair. Uh, and we wanted to do something to raise awareness that th this is a true icon in the city, that you have the potential to teach astronomy at the high school level, uh, to introduce uh, astronomy concepts, uh, physics concepts to high school students. Um, to have them observe the stars from their own high school. And so we, we, we just felt driven to get involved to see, to, to see that the observatory uh, was reinstated to its former glory and beyond, taking it beyond uh, and improving its capabilities. Nancy, for the next few months, people will be hearing more and more about the observatory, uh, the effort to, to rebuild. I guess, is, is rebuild too big of a word or is that a total remodel or something maybe? But they're going to be hearing more and more about the observatory. Can you just kind of share with us if someone's just tuning in the program um, and they've heard a little bit about it, but what are the goals and the objectives for, for this project? Well, it really goes back to uh, STEM outreach, science, technology, engineering, and math outreach okay. and providing this capability to have a telescope um, you know, our, our tagline of we will find stars is not just finding stars through the telescope. It's finding stars in the student population here in Enid to show them the incredible potential that they may have to achieve success in their own lives. And, and so uh, one of our goals is to physically improve the facility. There are some physical repairs that need to be done, but we would also like to replace the telescope put in a state-of-the-art telescope system that can be driven even through the internet so that students here in Enid in grade school, in middle school, their grandparents can stargaze through the comfort of their own home, uh, perhaps even extend that to other countries, uh, that they would have that same capability to be viewing the stars through a telescope here in Enid. So it's, it's not only taking care of the physical facility, but mm -hmm. it's also to improve the, the scientific and technology uh, capabilities that currently exist in the telescope. Not to put you on the spot, but do you have a date that when the telescope was installed, when was the observatory really put in place for the first time? Do you, I, I do believe you? it was 1964. Okay. I've, 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 heard the, I've heard the decade of the 60s, didn't mean to put you on the spot, but we can just say back in the 60s. Yeah, <laughs> I think it was 1963 okay. to be exact, so it's okay. been around for, for quite some time. And in fact, uh, some of the founders uh, of that telescope and, and original teachers at Enid High 
their children are now getting involved in this project right. as a right. legacy to their parents. Yeah. Um, Nancy, there's a website that says we will find stars.space. What will a person learn or find on that website? Um, everywhere from the, the goals and objectives of our campaign to restore the, the, the astronomy capabilities and telescope at the high school to links to NASA astronomy sites to get people interested in, in studying uh, the stars, uh, and also how to become a, a friend of the observatory. Um, the website is a, a tremendous capability. Uh, we hope to continue to improve it, to have more educational capabilities, uh, to have uh, resources for, for teachers. Uh, as well as students on that site. You mentioned Friends of the Observatory, which leads to one of my final questions. What does the Friend of Observatory, what, what do they get? I mean, are, are they just involved in the process? Do they, do they see the remodeling that goes on? Or, or is this a lifetime opportunity to, to be a friend of this project? It's a lifetime opportunity to take an investment in a resource that's very unique right here in Enid. And that investment could just be their time. It could certainly be financial resources that are needed to restore uh, the facility as well as the telescope. Um, so it can take many forms. Uh, it can be just taking community pride in this project. And maybe if they don't have the financial means to help with the project, but just taking pride and, and maybe sharing with people uh, that can help. Well, we're going to remind everybody that is watching City Connections with our, my special guest today, Dr. Greg, that we'll continue to show the program for, you know, several, several months. But just to remind you that uh, we encourage you to share this show uh, with other individuals and um, hopefully they'll be involved in the process as well. Besides uh, what it feels like to be in space and going to the bathroom or going to the restroom in space, there's a question that probably something, uh, the person just really wants to be an astronaut. So if, so if a fifth grader is looking at you, Nancy, and they raise their head in a very innocent way and they said, I want to be an astronaut, how do you respond to them? Study hard. <laughs> uh, learn to love math and science and continue to challenge yourself. Uh, find pleasure in achieving those goals along the way. And I, and I think by pursuing, you know, sometimes I'll get, what's the easiest degree I can get and still become an astronaut? So right mm. there sort of raises a red flag to me. <laughs> and, well, you shouldn't be looking for the easiest path. What I'm you should sorry, be, <laughs> that would have been my question. <laughs> what, what you should be looking for is where your passion is. Yeah. You know, whatever your passion, because if you're passionate about what you do, no matter what you do, you're, you're going to throw everything you have into that project. I was and, hoping and you wouldn't remember succeed. that question that I <laughs> threw out to you years ago or whatever. Well, that's great. Nancy, thank you so much for being here today. Um, I've given away a lot of things, but you're the first astronaut that I've given a T-38 jet to. Perfect. I've flown these. You know? <laughs> oh, well, I was hoping that was the case. But on behalf of the City of Enid, Mayor Bill Shuey, and our city commissioners, we want to thank you for coming to Enid. We appreciate your support. and. Um, the enthusiasm in this project and also your husband Tim Gregg and his enthusiasm as well to do this restoring effort of the observatory. But I thought, I saw this at my desk, I thought, eh, she needs a T-38 to take home I with do. her. And so, yeah. so there you go, again on behalf of the City of Enid, thank you very much and thanks for stopping by at the Enid Television Network studio. And this is the first of other visits, so if you want to give us an update on what things are going on in your life um, as an educator and as an astronaut and things you're involved in, and of course the observatory, you're welcome to come back anytime. Thank you very much. You're welcome. It's my thank pleasure. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. And thank you for joining us today on City Connections. Dr. Nancy Curry Gregg, astronaut, and again, your achievements can be as great as your dreams. Reach for the stars. The website again, we will find stars. Dot space. I encourage you to take a look at it. It's an impressive website, Tremen tremendous amount of information there, and how you can get involved in the restoration effort, if you will, of the uh, observatory at Enid High School. So, again, thank you for being with us. I look forward to talking with you next week and presenting another special guest on City Connections. Until next time, make it a great day.